Anthony, hey, man, let's see again. Nice to see. It's nice to be remembered. Thank you so much. That's a fun <laughs> room. That's such a fun room. Thank you. You know, I, I don't have as much fun as you guys, but I try. I try. <laughs> Um, so I'll go ahead and I'll get started. Anthony with the movie blog. Um, Robert, you're you're playing a younger version of Elrond, right? A character who has already been brought to life in those iconic Peter Jackson films. Right. How do you balance paying homage to Hugo Weaving's portrayal while also making the character your own? Yeah, the second one, really. <laughs> uh, uh, the, um, like. The way I've always thought about it is, is it, it's it's like it's like um, that's so far ahead in the future. The the third age, any kind of telling of the third age, and so I've, it's in there that I've had the lightest touch. In fact, there's there's the, when you read the third age books, there's a there's a lot of um, references to second age and the first age. That that's why I like so much about his writing. I almost feel when you're reading the Lord of the Rings trilogy. He's desperate to get some, you know, like you can feel how much he wants to talk about the the previous ages and the mm. history. You know what I mean? And um, when and whenever he can, he'll indulge in, oh, you know, this was where the city of Regeon laid, and you know, like you you, you uh, and he'll go into it a little bit. Um, so any of my interaction with the third age stuff has been sort of searching for those moments to help me here. But you know, in terms of like, um, I, I like to use the city of Rivendell as a sort of indicator as to who he's going to grow into because there's so many unique and strong elements to that city that like you can sort of pass back and find the person who created it so that's that's what i did a lot when 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 creating the character i think um yeah and i just became obsessed with the first aid and all those books are just totally obsessed you're doing a fantastic job i i love the sense of continuity in your performance Thank and you. And Ben, you know, Gilgalad is a is a figure from the first stage. Yet, you know, we see him in a more diplomatic role in this series. So, I'm curious, how did you approach playing a character with you know such immense power, but who operates from behind the scenes? Well, uh, it's you know the you know the the boiling pot seems still at a distance uh and also you start to see the seeds of who we know he will be in the second season and i mean that that's what's exciting about any well-written character is that you have to give them some place to start that allows them some place to go that we are allowing him the space to uh become this wartime general and to do that we have to start at this almost peacetime conciliary and that that, well, that said, thank you that um but that but then the gloves come off well yeah I, 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 uh, inevitably mm. and because of circumstance um he really has no choice and but i also like the the idea that when he eventually starts fighting there's just a little bit of a, a glimmer of a smile or it's like oh thank god i'm so tired of standing under that tree and talking <laughs> you know, i mean we know that from the books he presided over the longest period of peace in, in middle earth which is nothing to shake a stick at but it's also fun to shake a stick at an orc so yeah um we uh, it i'm lucky that i get to do both the uh political drama and um get my hands dirty in the mud well, Elrod and Gilgalad, they have such a nuanced, almost mentor-student relationship in the show. What was it like for you to work behind the scenes to develop the, the dynamic? And what can you tease for fans as to what they can expect from this relationship as the series progresses? Well, the, there's a, I think there's a mystery to the king. You know what I mean? There's a, there's a mystery to Elrond with the king as well. You know, like, like, like. I know how I feel about him, and I know that I trust him. But I also feel complicated about him. I, you know, you know, and but I, and I feel his lessons as well. But that's what I like about. I think Gil Gallad is constantly teaching Elrond lessons how to lead. Um, he, he's almost training me, but mm. not in the overt sense of like you'll have to remember this, Elrond, when you're king. <laughs> you know what I mean? Right. Not in that way. Yeah. But just sort of those little moments that Ben really brings to the role, where it's like 
you can, I think when you're playing those things with him, you can feel that Gil Gallard is being like, you know, this is an important thing that you need to see, learn, or experience, you know? And there's, uh, Gil Gallard, we know that he, he spent the majority of his youth with a surrogate father, um, you know, you know, sequestered and mentored by someone who isn't necessarily his blood. Uh, wasn't signed up for the job, and it's it's like um, in some ways, uh, like a really good nanny. Forgive the analogy, uh, can be almost better than a parent because they're so egoless and they have so much experience that they can come and offer life lessons in a way of uh, example, um, a structure that is at first glance, seemingly uh, impersonal, but in the long run, almost more loving because uh, parents oftentimes uh, impose what their parents did and their expectations of themselves on their children, as opposed to someone who has no dog in the fight that, that you can really learn from. It's like, why well, you don't take uh, piano lessons from your parents? Um, it, it's just too complicated. And in that way, I think he understands that surrogate mentor relationship and is therefore uh, readily, readily available to apply it to Elrond. Mm. Um, and so they can both grow together, but also you know, share ideas and enrich each other's journeys. Mm. I'm not saying nannies are better than parents. I have no opinion either way. But there is something to that relationship that... Um, no actually means no. Mm. Mm. You're not going to be able to manipulate because you're not my kid. <laughs> it's also very common at the end of the first stage. What's for, that? For things like that to happen. Oh, yeah. You know, well, especially because everybody's dead. Yeah, it was on a broke and up. Yeah. Everyone was dead. And, yeah. you know, like, like I was we're, taking care we're of. We're cobbling together on the family we choose. Yeah, yeah, yeah. As opposed to, um, you know, daddy said, go to my room. Yeah. Well, thank you. Common. But often misquoted uh, Tolkien uh, line. Line, yeah. <laughs> well, thank you both so much. It's it's a pleasure speaking with you. I I'll see if you guys can spot the difference the next time I speak with you in the room. Uh, All right. But it's it's been a pleasure. Thank you both so much. Okay. <laughs>